Madhu Namani, Product Specialist at TA Instruments. I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us in today's webinar. During the webinar, you can customize the viewing interface by arranging the windows to your liking. You can resize the window of your choice by clicking and dragging the bottom right corner of each window. If you get disconnected at any time, please do use the instructions as received to log back in. You can access several different content windows by clicking the widgets at the bottom of the screen. These include speaker bio, additional file downloads, and the Q&A tool. If you need help, click the question mark widget. Please ask any questions you may have at any time during this presentation by submitting them through the Q&A window. We will answer as many as these possible at the end of the webinar. Today, I would like to welcome Thomas Roshman to our webinar series. Thomas is currently the product manager for TA Instruments rubber testing product line. During his 23 year professional career, Thomas has held various roles in research and development of rubber technology, developing new techniques for rubber production and innovating instrumentation and software for testing rubber products. Prior to joining TA, Thomas held the position of general manager for Scarabase, a company he co-founded in Germany in 1994. Thomas is an active member of the German Rubber Society and currently co-chair of the South Southwest German Rubber Society. The title of Thomas's webinar today is Advanced Rheological Measurements on Polymers and Rubber Compounds. Thomas? Thank you. Today I want to talk about existing and advanced rheological measurements on polymers and rubber compounds. First, I want to give you an overview about what is typical in the rubber industry and what are the advanced uh, uh, polymers uh, testing and compound testing. So typical what the people are doing every day is measuring the Mooney viscosity, the hardness, the density. So what they do is they measure absolute values. The next step, the second step is to measure complex values. Complex values, if you remember, you can do a cure curve, you can measure G prime, G double prime, or S prime and S double prime, and you can calculate the tangent delta. But this is mainly done on a, on a one shear rate, on one frequency, or one strain. The third step is measuring complex functions. So that is what we want to go today a little bit more in, in, in detail. And the fourth step is yeah, the academic models, which are doing mainly our universities to develop new systems, advanced systems. But today I want to go more in, in, in the red top of this, of this third plateau. It's a complex function. So I want to start with the, with the Mooney, the Mooney viscosity. And uh, the Mooney viscosity also has a, is a worldwide standard, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, but it's a constant strain and a constant frequency, so we measure at, at two uh, RPMs, for example, and also the rheometer, the MDR, it is also a worldwide standard, but also measured at a fixed frequency and a fixed strain. The Mooney, so when you measure the Mooney viscosity, a typical curve you see on the left graph, so you have a one minute preheat time, you have four minute test time, and for example here, two minute relaxation time. If you calculate the Mooney viscosity, for example the ML1 plus four, and plot this one M, this, this value, the ML1 plus four, on the viscosity curve, you see very well that we measure only at one shear rate. So we call it a, a one point measurement. So that is a, a, only a, a detailed information, but it's only a, a small information and not the whole shear rate what we are measuring. When you're doing a Mooney viscosity test, it makes definitely sense to add two minute test time to make a relaxation test, because the relaxation test gives you more information about the elasticity, about dies well, and when you plot it as a log-log scale, you get this, uh, li like curves like on the, on the right graph, that means that, uh, the, the, for example, you get a, a slope of such curves, and the slope of such curve is the MSR value. The MSR means Mooney Stress Relaxation Value. I will come later a little bit more in detail of this value. So, what is a relaxation? The relaxation, if you plot it as a log-log scale, and when you get more in the blue line, then you get a, a very high elasticity well, uh, uh, material. If you go to the red line, you get more in a Newtonian uh, behavior. And the elastomere is always between the red and the blue line. 
Very often you see on a relaxation uh, plot such curves like the, like the red curve, and this is not a, a, a normal behavior. This is not a behavior which comes from the, from the polymer. This comes definitely from the instrument. You always have to, to check that your values have a curve like the blue one. What happened and what is the reason for such a uh, non-typical uh, uh, curve? The, the reason is that the stopping time of the rotor is too high. That means if we increase the stopping time of the motor, we get such typical values. But remember, in the ASTM, you have to stop the rotor within 100 milliseconds. And if you get a behavior like this, you have a stopping time up to 300 milliseconds. And that is the difference between different instruments which are uh, available on the, uh, on the market. So a short summary on the Muni viscosity. Very important is the Muni viscosity is a worldwide standard, is very well known, but it is measured only at one shear rate. So you measure at 1.6 second minus one, so that's at two RPM. So it's a one point method, so you measure only one point on a Muni, on, on a viscosity curve. If you're doing a Muni test, Muni relaxation is very important because it gives you uh, an answer of the elasticity and can you give you more information, for example, for die swell. But very often customers are coming to us and asking us for more information because they have the same Muni value, but they have still problems in production with different polymers or different compounds. The next step is the MDR, the moving diameter. On the left plot, you see uh, the, the blue curve is a typical cure curve, which we all measure every time and every day in the, in the rubber industry. And the red curve is a viscose part, is a S double prime. The rear meter, uh, which is on the market, are, have a B-conic dies. They are closed dies. They are sealed with a rubber seal. They have a fixed frequency of 100 CPM. That means 1.67 hertz and a strain of out of five degree and 7% of strain. But also when you, for example, calculate the minimum of such a curve, then you also have only one point on a viscosity curve. Also here we measure only one shear rate and nothing more. So I want to go a little bit more in detail on a rheometer test. So what we have, we measure because of the frequency, ever, every 600 milliseconds we measure such a sinus a sinus of the stress and a sinus of the strain. So you can plot a sinus curve as a function of a time, or you can plot it stress over strain, then you get such a curve like an ellipse. Yeah? And the torque, sure the torque is a function of the time because during the time the, the curing behavior is starting. Then you have a torque as a function of the strain. If you have a higher strain, you get a higher torque. If you get a higher frequency, you get also higher torque, and sure the temperature is also uh, very important here in this behavior. So a typical sinus function, you see on the right plot, um, that's a, uh, the sinus as a function of the time, that's a typical periodic signal. And yeah, what can we do with a periodic signal? We can use a Fourier analysis to split it in the elastic part and the viscose part. So this is S prime and S double prime, and that is what we measure every time. So if you plot the sinus curve not as a function of a time, and then you plot the, the sinus curve as a function of the frequency, you get one signal in your Fourier transformation uh, at one frequency if you have an optimum linear and a really good sinus curve. The other way to calculate the, uh, the elastic part and the viscose part is to go direct in the ellipse. So if you get at the highest strain, you get the elastic part. If you measure the absolute highest value, you get the complex part. And if you measure the torque at the, at, when the strain is zero, you get the viscous part. This is also a possibility to measure, uh, to, to calculate S prime, S double prime. But normally a lot of people, or what, also what we are doing, we are using the Fourier transformation to calculate the elastic and the viscose part. Now, in the rubber industry, uh, we have normally not really very often linear behavior because we have polymers which have a, a high structure, high, high branched. We put a lot of ingredients in our compounds like carbon black and all this other stuff. So the answer is very often not a linear, 
curve, like a, like a nice ellipse, is an ellipse like on the, on the right top plot. And what happened in the Fourier analysis, so we also get not only a signal on the first harmonic, we also get signal on the higher harmonic. And in the moment, everybody is, can normally calculate this higher harmonics, but we throw it away. That, but this is a very important information, which I will explain later in my presentation. So a short summary for MDR, for real meter. Again, what is typical on the market, we have a B-conic die, we have a closed die system on a fixed frequency, 100 CPM at 1.67 Hz, at 0.5 degree of, of strain, so that's about 7% strain. But again, also as a Mooney, we are measuring only at one shear rate. But again, what happened in the, in the, during production, we have the whole range of shear rates in our production, but we calculate and characterize our material only with a one-point method. So, and this is the reason why we really get, need more information for the developer and for the guys in production to characterize materials if they are good for production or not. So I want to give you a short, a short example. <laughs> if you measure um, the signal of a, of a Vulcan meter, you see on the left plot the sinus of a Vulcan meter, and on the right plot you see the Fourier transformation. You see at one frequency we have one signal, and that is all. Now, when you go um, and, and uh, scan the children's merry-go-around, you get more frequencies on the left side as a function of a time, and you get it as a Fourier spectrum, you get a broad spectrum. And maybe you have it at home, or maybe on the motorway, you sometimes hear a Porsche, then you get a, a broad spectrum. But the Vulcan meter, a children's, for, for a Vulcan meter, a children's merry-go-around and a Porsche, it's the same. They, they cannot differentiate it, but um, maybe a Porsche driver is, is not very happy if you say it's the same as a children's merry-go-around. So what can we do? We have done a lot of uh, work in our RPA flex, in our RPA lead. So what we can do on our RPAs is to change frequency and to change strains to have measurements at different shear rates. I want to start with the frequency. So what we want to do is to have a fixed uh, strain and have a variable frequency of a wide range beginning from 0.001 hertz up to 50 hertz. And what we want to calculate and check is the G prime, G double prime, and also tangent stellar. So what is, a, what is the idea? The idea is at the end to have a viscosity curve. The, the yellow curve is a typical viscosity curve as a function of a shear rate. And again, when, you come, when we go back and have a Mooney viscosity here on this, on this viscosity curve, the slope, the slope of the viscosity curve could be completely different with the same Mooney viscosity because it is only measured at one shear rate. And that is a problem what we very often have in, 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 our, in the industry. Sure, what we do not do is we cannot measure the viscosity with our RPA, but what we are measuring is a torque. With the torque, we can calculate the G prime or the module. And from the module, we can calculate the viscosity with the help of the cox metz rule. That is what we are doing, what is working very well with, with rubber polymers and rubber compounds. So then we have a, a viscosity as a function of a shear rate. So when we now plot G prime and G double prime, we get at the yellow point, we get a crossover point of the elastic part and the viscous part. And Shen published in 1971 a paper which he found out that, the, that this crossover point gives a nice correlation to the molecular weight. So you can, we can measure very easily a, really a, a, a value to characterize the structure of a polymer. And this is a, a nice example. So what happened when the, when the crossover point changed? If it goes to the right side, you have um, um, a lower molecular weight. When it goes to the left side, you have a higher molecular weight. When the point comes down, you have a broad molecular weight distribution. If it goes high, you have a small uh, or near uh, mo molecular weight distribution. And that is very easy to measure with such a type of instrument and gives you really an information about the structure, about the molecular weight of your, of your polymer. How does this work? 
So this was one of our first examples many years ago on a, on a natural rubber. So it was a natural rubber from a customer from us with the same Mooney viscosity, but when you go to the left side of the plot, you see very well the big difference on molecular weight. And that is very important, for example, if you use natural rubber in your products, in your, in your cured rubber products, for life cycle, or for dynamic, uh, the, of the dynamic behavior. So you, what you need is a, is a high molecular weight, and uh, that is an easy test what we can do here. Again, on the no standard quality control for Mooney viscosity, you cannot differentiate these two types of, of, of uh, natural rubber. And that was very helpful for our customer. Now what I plotted here is only the G prime until the crossover point. And what did we? We did um, a natural rubber with different time of um, mastication. So two minute, six minute, and 10 minute on a, on a mixer. And what you see is what normally what we all expect. The point going more and more to the right side. So because of we, we, we destroy the, 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 the polymer. So we make an mastication and the molecular weight goes to smaller values. But this was done without any ingredients. What happened when, when we put some chemicals, ingredients inside? So we tested different ingredients with the same amount of, of, uh, of, of, this, of these ingredients and they have complete different behavior. So that's it's very easy such a test, when you want to characterize the behavior of these different ingredients, if you want to change one by the other, it's not so easy to change it one by one because the behavior is completely different. What you can see of the different crossover points, what happened uh, when you put this in, in, in your mixer. So it's very easy and, uh, and a very useful tool for the developer to get the fast information until he will make it a lot of compounds in the mixer and see after the mixing what happened with, with, my, with my compound. Also for silicon rubber, it works very well for silicon rubber. Also here we can measure the crossover point. We get uh, examples from a customer with a well-known molecular weight and we plot it against our crossover point which we calculated with our RPA Elite and RPA Flex and you see a very nice and very good correlation. So the system is working very well with a an, with an very easy test, what we, what we can do on our RPAs. Very often customers ask me, um, can, we, can we calculate the Mooney viscosity with an RPA? And yes, we have to be honest. No, we, can, we cannot calculate directly the Mooney viscosity. But when you measure the cheap star, the, the complex module at this, um, shear weight where the Mooney happens. So we can normally generate a very nice and good correlation to our, to our Mooney viscosity of such a compound or such a polymer. But we have to be honest, you have to do this correlation for each compound in each polymer. So it's not a general calculation of the Mooney viscosity, what we can do with our, with our RPA. So what we did is we, had, we changed the frequency at a constant strain. So what we now do is we have a fixed frequency and we want to change the strain. On our RPAs, we can change the strain beginning from 0.005 degree of arc until plus minus 360 degree of arc. And also here, what we want to do is to measure the torque and calculate G prime, G double prime, and also the tangent standard. So that is a typical strain curve of a polymer in the rubber industry. So what we have, we are st starting from the left side, we are on the linear viscoelasticity behavior. It's, uh, the module is independent from the strain. Then we're coming to the nonlinear viscoelasticity uh, up to the Laos test. Laos means large amplitude oscillation shear. That means we're going to really a high strain uh, on, this, on this polymer. How looks the ellipse? For example, when you go in the linear regime, you get such a nice curve, a nice ellipse, ellipse. But when you go to the higher strain, you get complete different behavior. And that is very interesting because when you remember, when you go in an injection molding machine, in an extrusion line, what happened? You have a high strain on your, on your compounds, on your polymer. And that is what we want to check here more in detail. So there are a lot of 
papers published. One, one guy is Henri Boron. He published a lot of these papers. And for example, here what we plotted here is a red curve. It's a high strain. It's plus minus 1,000% of strain. It's a red curve. And normally we would expect the blue curve as the answer for the stress. But that happened not. The answer was the, red, uh, the, sorry, was the black curve. And when you plot all this stress over the strain, you get on the white curve such a, such a behavior of, of, a, of, a, of a curve. And I want to go a little bit more in detail what happened here. If you plot such a curve, uh, the, the shear stress not as a function of a strain, you plot it as a strain weight, then you can see on this example there is a mixing polymers in solution. That means we have a branched polymer, this is a the red curve, and we have a blue curve, this is a linear polymer, and the black one is between. That means if we have a linear polymer and you plot the stress over the strain rate, you get such secondary loops, and this gives you an information about the linearity of your polymers. If you have more and more branched polymers, or, or, or polymers, yes, in your, in your solution, then the secondary loops uh, disappears and you get a, a curve like the, the, like, the, like the red one. So what we have to do is to characterize a polymer really about the structure is not doing a Mooney viscosity. What we have to do is we have to make a frequency sweep to calculate the molecular weight and molecular weight distribution. And what we have to do is to make a Laos test. So we have to do a, a high strain test so then we can make a, a info, give you information about the long chain branching of the polymer, which is very important for the behavior and the production of the, of the polymer and of the compound. A nice example, and that is very, really an example uh, of in, in the rubber industry, is a comparison of two EBDM types. So it's a Keltan 512 and the Buna EPG 5450. Both have the same specification. If you see there, they have the same Mooney viscosity, the same E and B content, the same two C2 content, or close the same one though. And everybody told our customers, you can change it one by one. This is no problem. But then the customer came to me and told me, oh, we have a lot of trouble in production, but it's the same Mooney viscosity. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, analyze and start these tests, what we, what we mentioned before. So the first thing, we make a, a frequency sweep and plot the viscosity as a function of the shear rate. In this middle area, where the shear rate is close to the Mooney viscosity, you see that the curves are really close to each other, so they are nearly the same, yes? I believe they have the same Mooney viscosity. But when you go on the left side of the curve, you say differences, and also on the right side of the curve. Here it seems that the differences are not so, so big, but be careful, it is a log scale, so there are difference about 20 to 30 percent. So it's definitely not the same polymer. Also, if you plot G prime and G double prime as a function of the frequency or of the shear rate, and also you see here the crossover point is complete different. At, and remember again, it's the same Mooney viscosity of these two EBDMs, yeah, but the, the crossover point is completely different. The next plot also is the tangens delta. If you please double check the tangens delta at the low frequency or at the low shear rate, you see big differences here, up to 30% difference. And sure, that causes difference in, uh, uh, difference in, in production. And also, if you plot, uh, make a Laos test, so now what we plot here is the G prime and the tangens delta. And on the right plot, you see the tangent stellar. The big difference is also here on the tangent stellar. And again, what I want to say is it's the same Mooney viscosity, but uh, I'm, I think everybody now is convinced that these polymers are really not the same, and the test can be done very easily, very fast, and the absolute test time doing such a test is about 10 minutes, so it's not really not much more than doing a Mooney viscosity test. Now I want to go a little bit more in detail on this example on showing you more about the long chain branching because it's a very important information. And please remember what we saw before on the polymer which was in a mixing solution. Also here we have the red curve, 
which sh shows no secondary loops, and the blue curve, the Buna, shows definitely uh, starting the, the secondary loops. That means that the Keltan is much more branched than the Buna. So you have difference in long chain branching, and again, with the same Mooney viscosity. But again, I understand that normally the, the guys in, in, in the daily business have no time to, to, to look every time on, on the blots. For them, um, there was a published paper where we can calculate a long chain branching index to give you a number like the Mooney viscosity, which gives you a number of the, of the long chain branching. And that is what we do is we using the higher harmonics of the Fourier transformation. And that means if the value goes to a negative value, then you have a linear polymer. When it goes to a positive value, then we get more and more a branch polymer. And this is what we do and calculate after each test uh, within one, two seconds. And then you have the information if you have a polymer with different long chain branching. Then uh, the results here for the Keltan, it's a positive value, so it's O dot uh, H3, this means it is more branched than the Buna, which uh, gives you a negative value with O dot 5.2. Uh, that is the result of the long chain branching index. And this could be the result, the same as the Mooney viscosity, and it's a nice information for, for quality control of polymers. And I think it's a very important uh, information because it has much more uh, content, much more information uh, than the Mooney viscosity ever has. This is the next example, I think that is also what I have every day uh, when I'm talking to, to, to customers and I'm going around in the rubber industry, is the people coming to me and, and t telling me they have two, two Q curves, two compounds, or it's the same compound with, uh, with two different lots, and the Q curves are really close and are really the same, and everybody would say, yes, it's the same, so we can do both in production. But you see, I wrote there one is bad and one is good, so that means one was good in production, one was very bad in production. So that means, um, uh, what can we do? What can we give the more information to the operator and the, and, and, the, and the people in production to know in advance that something is going wrong? So again, what we plot here is the viscosity. Again, we made the same test as we done on the as we did on the on the polymer. So also here, you see in the middle of, this, of the curve, the curves are nearly the same. This is the shear rate where we are doing our MDR test. Yeah, so the curves are the same, but when you go to, again, on a lower uh, shear rate or higher shear rate, you see the differences. Also here, the differences seems are very small, but we are again here on the log scale, so differences are about 20% between these two, between these uh, compounds. When we plot, and that's a nice thing here, is also the tangent delta. Again, the same Q curves, and what we get is a lo at low frequency, we get a difference in tangent delta at low frequencies. And the last test is the Laos test. So you see, please, on the right side, you see the big differences in tangent delta. Again, it's nearly the same Q curves, but the big difference in tangent delta, and that was a problem what this customer has with, with in, 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 in extrusion with complete different dice well, and he saw it not on the standard MDR test, and that is the reason uh, why he is using now such an RPA flex for additional quality control of his compounds. So also here, we can, you can plot on a compound, you also can, can plot the, cheap, uh, the, the stress over the strain rate, and you also can see here the differences in, in long chain branching. So, um, what is very often when I introduce this in the, in the rubber industry, uh, one, one requirement is, and the main requirements for industrial use is really that we have to do this uh, in the daily business and it has to be easy to use. And is it easy to use? And we have to answer yes, it is, because a lot of people are doing this now. So it is one test band for frequency sweep and a strain sweep, and it's about 10 minutes to do this test. So it's not a half an hour, or two hour test, it's really up to 10 minutes what we have to do. What we have to do is very easy, what, you, what the operator is also doing in the moment uh, with, um, with the MDR, we have five gram and put this between two films and put it in our instruments, and the software is calculating all necessary values which we have or which we use or which we need to characterize polymers and compounds 
in a very good, in a, in a very good way. So what is important to do such a test? You need really reliable data from an instrument. And that is something, please double check says first on your instrument, if the instrument is really working well, and how can you do this? So the easiest way is, please double check your tangent delta. When you measure a tangent delta as a function of the frequency or the shear rate, and you see on the left plot at higher frequency, you see a lot of noise on it, also on the low, uh, low frequencies, and you see it also on the, on the right plot at lower frequency, you see the big noise or differences in the, in the tangent delta curves. And this gives you, sure, not really reliable data, and this gives you a lot of yeah, noise on your data, and you cannot see, is it coming from the compound, from the polymer, or is it coming, co uh, coming more from, 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 um, from the instrument? But I really want to say it is possible, and that is what I want to say here, what we're doing on our instruments. You see really the repeatability of the, of the values are very, very good, are very useful. You can use it every day, 365 days per year. Yeah? So that is what we, what we did and what we yeah, developed in the, in the last 10, 15 years. And that is very important. And please double check first your instruments before you're going and calculate these values. Uh, but then it's very helpful for you and for your guys in, in production. And then you can go on with such uh, test methods in doing, doing this test. Okay, this, that was my presentation today about existing advanced rheological measurement on polymers and rubber compounds. Thank you for your interest and yeah, thank you again. Thank you, Thomas, for the informative presentation.